Hello and welcome to my reading vlog of The Final Gambit by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. If this is one of your first videos that you're seeing of mine, hi, I'm Monica and I make bookish content here on YouTube. And if that sounds interesting to you, give me a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down below to see more of my videos. So today I'm just sitting down to introduce this reading vlog of book three in the Inheritance Games trilogy, The Final Gambit. And I'm so excited for this one. Really quickly, if you don't know what this series is about, so the first book of Inheritance Games is about Avery who mysteriously overnight she becomes the heiress to a billionaire's fortune known as Tobias Hawthorne. But well, the only caveat to that is that she needs to live in the Hawthorne house for a year before she gains that inheritance. But in that Hawthorne house, there is a bunch of rooms and hidden passageways and a lot of games and puzzles that Avery needs to solve along with the four Hawthorne grandsons and along the way Avery might just catch an eye of one of them and I really had fun reading the series. It's really fast paced, the chapters are really short and it just makes you want to know what's happening and how Avery is connected to these Hawthorns and why she's even named as a teenage heiress to billions. Some of my expectations going into the final gambit is that I just want to have a satisfying ending. I want to find out all the answers to the mystery that we have been presented with since book one. I really want Avery to have a happy ending and if that is with one of the Hawthorne boys, I'm going to be happy about that. <laughs> Although I am on team Grayson, but I think uh, let's just see what happens. So let's just go right into the reading vlog portion of this video. Really quickly, I just finished filming that intro portion and I have forgot to mention that I will be mentioning spoilers in this reading vlog. I know that's not something that a lot of people like, but because this is the last book and I really don't want to censor myself of what happens in the book, there will be spoilers. Okay, hi again. So I just read up to around chapter 6. I know that's not really far into the book yet. And there's like 80 something chapters of this like 380 page book. When we got news of Grayson coming back to the Hawthorne house, I was like, oh my god. I just love this character a lot compared to Jameson. I think with Jameson, he's more suited to Avery as a love interest. And I do think that they are a good match. I just think I could have Grayson to for myself. <laughs> At this point in the book, we are introduced back to Avery and after she almost got blown up from that airplane explosion. I still remember from the second book that I was just, I was just like crying and screaming because of how Grayson froze, how he didn't go to help Avery. I think that just caused a rift like for Grayson a lot. But I think for Avery now, she's also learning how to protect herself and she's learning how to use a knife and a gun. Um, so I think that's good on her to actually provide herself with some protection even though she has bodyguards 24-7. So far, my initial thoughts going into this book is that I'm really excited to be back into all these characters' lives and I'm just really thrilled to see what happens next. Okay, I'll see you in the next clip. So when I was on my break at work, I decided to stop by Indigo and just to see what kind of books they had, I didn't end up getting anything. Then I went to get bubble tea and there was this new store called Machi Machi where I work and I got the green tea with panna cotta. So it was like a dessert at the end and I tasted it and it was really good. <laughs> Alright, so excuse my appearance, I just came back from work and on the commute to and from work, I was reading The Final Gambit. I am at uh, page 100, which is chapter 25, so I'm assuming I'm around a quarter of the way through this one. And I do have some thoughts. Okay, so uh, so far what I think about The Final Gambit is that it's more or less of the same of what we got in the first two books. And that was what I was expecting from this one. The only difference now is that Avery has actually chosen who she wants to be with. And I guess with that, with her choosing Jameson, 
and not Grayson. Jameson also has some doubts in his mind because no one has ever actually chosen him, which is sad. I really do like how Avery does reassure him that she chose him and not Grayson. Although now where I am in the book, we do have the appearance of Eve, who is Toby's real daughter. At Hawthorne House was just an expected one, I think. She apparently looks exactly like Emily Laughlin. And when Grayson sets eyes upon her, he's just like, oh my god. I mean, he knows it's not Emily, but he could tell what's gonna happen. I think Grayson and Eve will get together. I guess where we are in the puzzle in this book is because Toby has now been kidnapped and that's why Eve shows up at Hawthorne House for help. And I think the person who has kidnapped Toby is not someone that we have came across before? I don't know. Sometimes the mystery in this series, I get a little bit confused. Maybe because I'm focused on the romance. <laughs> but I do think we still have some of the same flavor of the first two books of Avery and the Hawthorne boys being really smart and cracking codes and riddles and solving these games. And the author does include little reminders of what has happened before so you're not completely lost if you don't remember, which I do like. I do believe that Avery is still struggling of what to do with her inheritance and they're I think two weeks away from her actually getting that inheritance. So let's see what happens next and what I think about that. See you guys soon. Okay, hi again. I think it's been around two days since that last clip you just saw and I'm at like this far into the book. I'm at chapter 66. Okay, so first off, sorry about the bad lighting. Um, I think I've read around maybe 75% of the book by now. For the past two days, I've been busy working and doing schoolwork, so I haven't been really actively um, reading as much as I want to be. From this point in the book, we are finding out more things about who Eve is, who has shown up unexpectedly. We're finding out more about why she's even here. When the focus of the story was starting to go back onto Eve, I was like, she's suspicious off from the start and she's managing to have Grayson trust her, but I think she does have a good motive of trying to understand where her family is from and why she has had such a hard childhood and all of that. So I don't blame her for doing all that she is doing. And we're still following Avery who is trying to solve a new game or puzzle to save Toby and to figure out what Eve's motives truly are. And then there's the underlying tone of the, our three main characters. I would say they are three main characters with Avery, Jameson, and Grayson. Grayson and Avery having this strange friendship of where she's saying that she doesn't want to be with him, which is true, but then it's a weird dynamic of him being friend zone. <laughs> and once I read that chapter about the cellar scene that was hinted at in book two, I was just like, okay. <laughs> um, it's really sad of what Grayson's going through because he thinks he's worth this now because he's lost the position of being the heir apparent. And that happened when Avery showed up unexpectedly a year ago from this point. He's just grappling with his emotions and trying to understand his emotions. But Jameson, on the other hand, he keeps on comparing himself to Grayson and thinking that is what Avery wants him to be. Like there is a scene where he and Avery are arguing with each other and Jameson is saying, I thought this is what you want to house someone who's protecting you and doing all things that Grayson would do if Avery and Grayson were together instead of Avery and Jason. And I'm just thinking in my head, like, these boys need, like, a therapist. <laughs> they need to go to therapy. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they could afford it. So at this point, I don't trust Eve still. And Avery still being her very intelligent self, trying to solve this mystery. And we also find out how Tobias Hawthorne, the billionaire who has passed away, has dark secrets. With the Hawthorne family, it's not surprising or shocking that they all have done bad things and with the kind of money that you have when you're a billionaire kind of family you have money to cover up things so 
I'm not surprised. Bring up like the business side of things in this book of where Tobias Hawthorne actually got his fortune and made his fortune through oil, I think. It reminds me of the TV show Dynasty. The show has a lot of drama and people are dying left and right, but then this family is really rich and they cover up their mistakes because they're rich. And reading this book now is reminding me of that TV show. Next time you see me, I will be concluding this video and saying my final thoughts. Alright, so I just finished uh, The Final Gambit by Jennifer Lynn Barnes and let me just say, right from the end of that last clip, I was continuing to read the book. Literally, the next chapter, Eve pulled a gun on Avery and I was like, okay, so Eve is definitely not trustworthy. And it turns out she is part of the Blake family and trying to run a scheme, trying to claim Avery's fortune and all of that. So it was finally nice to see Grayson not be, I guess, attached to Eve because Eve looks like Emily and that's a whole other thing for him. And we finally move on to how Avery and the boys are listening to the last message from their grandfather Tobias. And Tobias is explaining to everyone that she was only chosen to be a scapegoat and in order to protect his family and his loved ones. Which makes sense in that way but it's kind of sad for Avery but at this point Avery is like makes sense but she's still the heiress to the villains and we learned about the dark secret that the Hawthorne family has and there's a one last dark secret that we find out near the end of the book it was Vincent Blake's son Will who then kind of seduced a 16 year old girl and he, Will at the time was like 20 years old they were in his early 20s so that was really gross And I really liked how when Avery went to the Blake compound that she took a very risky gamble. She decided to propose a little chess tournament against the Blakes in order to like win back Toby and free Grayson who is sacrificial and I don't know what's, what is up with these Hawthorne boys being really sacrificial. I really liked how that chess competition is like a callback to the book one of where Avery is playing chess against Toby but at the time he was posing as a homeless man. Avery at this point, I really like how she was playing the game and it was now her own game that she concocted against Vincent Blake, so I really like how she kind of went a full circle in this last portion of the book. And the ending with what Avery does with the fortune, and of course if you were watching this video until this point, you would know that Avery decided to give up like 96% of the fortune, which is which is $32 billion to charity and but then she still keeps like $2 billion, so she's pretty much set for her life for her and the Hawthorns. It wasn't a surprise to me of why she did that because with that type of fortune and inheritance that she got, it does bring a huge boatload of trouble and she has seen what trouble that kind of money has brought into her life. At the end of the book, I was really satisfied with that ending. The boys are in a happier place. They could do whatever they want without the expectation of upholding with that huge fortune over their heads. And then Avery could also just live her life, travel and be with Jameson and be happy. <laughs> so I really like the ending. On to my concluding thoughts of the final gambit and I will be uploading a overall review of the entire trilogy that would be coming up in the next week or so. But for now, my current thoughts on The Final Gambit was that it was a really good concluding book. We got a little bit of everything, the riddles, constant mind games, the romance, the extravagant settings that we get coming from a billionaire family. I really liked how Avery finally got to embrace her wild side, which came out from her being with Jameson and going on adventures and just having fun in her life without any care or worry. Also, I really liked how Avery finally got everything together in the end, what to do with the inheritance, and it was quite befitting towards who she is as a person. And I still stand by that each character in this series, they all need a therapist or they need to go to therapy. With everything they've gone through, with people dying left and right, kidnappings, bombings, like they need some 
they need someone to talk to on the outside. <laughs> Moving on to the Hawthorns with Jameson. I do really like him and Avery together. Jameson has finally understood that they love each other for who they are and they don't need to pretend to be someone else. My favorite is still Grayson. He tried to be such a perfectionist, but then he realizes that it's okay not to be perfect in life. And the youngest, Xander, he was always really fun to read about with his eccentric ways and really intelligent mind with like robotics and explosions. And with the oldest Hawthorne brother being Nash, I really liked how he acted like the protective older brother to everyone in the family, even to Avery and her friends. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm actually quite satisfied about the ending and we finally got to see how Avery was connected to this entire Hawthorne inheritance situation that she was tossed into. Although there was many different layers, there was people who died, people who got injured, a lot of dramatic romantic scenes. It was really fun overall to have this quick paced series because of the short chapters. I would have liked to see an expansion of some of the characters personal growth and kind of explore more about the characters themselves but I would say for the author I give props to her because in order to think about other mysteries, the riddles, and even the strategic mind games. Like with chess, I don't know anything about chess. I don't think I would be able to come up with all of that on my own. And I do have to mention that in the final gamut, some things were quite obvious to me. Like when Eve popped up, I'm like, she's going to be a bad character towards our main lovable characters. I get it. And it did help wrap everything up nicely. So overall, I do think I am going to be rating this book a 4 out of 5 stars. Again, it was quite a satisfying ending to me. In the future going forward, I would like to see more of these types of books coming out. How there's a lot of mysteries and riddles that is engaging for me. Anyways, I'm going to end this vlog now. Um, this was a really fun experience to see and film myself and my reactions while I read The Final Gambit and I really hope to do more reading vlogs in the future. I hope you all enjoyed this vlog. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, hit subscribe, and ring that bell if you want to see more videos from me in the future. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!